Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It is Denise Salcedo, and I am very stoked because right now my guest is none other than the AEW TNT champion, P -p -p Powerhouse Hobbs. I like that. I like that. What's going on? Thank you for having me. Dude, I got to tell you, I was practicing that like a bunch of times because I'm like, I cannot mess this up. Like this is, you know, like this is the you intro can. I got to do. I'm, I'm with it. You get an A plus. 100%. Thank you. Thank you, man. So I'm so excited to talk to you. But before we kind of get into like all the conversation of everything that you have been doing, I want I want to talk about how this interview came about. Because oh, when I told you, uh, me and you got beef, I got heat with you. Yeah. Yeah, it was literally the, like just the saw best the look friend. on your face. It's How like was one it? Of those, I, I effed up looks, but I, I was just joking with you. No, I loved it though because it was it was so funny because you know I'm seeing you and you're like, oh, me and you we got beef, and I'm like, oh my god, inside my head I was like, <laughs> I got beef with Powerhouse Hobbs. This is not good. This is not good. And I was like, okay, this is it. I'm gonna have to go ahead and confront him and ask him what I did. And it was so funny when you told me that it was a joke, and I was like. Oh, thank God. Like this huge, immense, like relief went over me. But I just thought it was so funny, though, that I was like, that's great. I got I got ribbed on. This is awesome. You did. You did. I got you. I got you. <laughs> All right. So let's hop in, man. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, TNT champ, man. How does it feel to hear that, to hear that right now? Like, hey, you're the champ. It's, it's wild. It's crazy because, I mean, I was talking to Chris Jericho. Uh, the night I won the championship and then he, you know, he texts me the next day and he, and he was like, it's almost like a Cinderella story. You can go from enhancement talent to TNT champion. And, and during that pandemic era, nobody knew who the hell I was besides anybody local to, to the Bay area in California. So it's wild everywhere I go, I'm getting, getting love. And, I'm, you know, sometimes I get some dirty looks wherever I go, but it, it's, it's all right with me, you know, to, Today is a good day because it's actually Powerhouse Hobbs Day in the city of East Palo Alto. So, oh my God, that's incredible! Like, I, when you think about all of these things that are happening in your life, and you think about like how you got here, because only you yourself know your journey and everything that you went through to get here. Like, yeah. how does that make you feel? Like knowing everything that you went through to finally get to this point, you're on AEW, you're one of the featured talents, you're out there killing it, having all of these matches as the champ. Uh, you know, you just had that awesome match with Ray Phoenix. You're, you know, the Penta match is going to air on Saturday. I mean, like all of this is happening. Like this is real. Uh, it's, like I said, it's, I knew eventually I would get here. You know, I, I I was told by my grandparents, you know, everyone has a purpose in life. And I've always felt this was my purpose to be a professional wrestler and entertain people. So it, it took a while, but I'm here and making the most of it. And, you know, uh, when, when we were in, in the Bay Area, San Francisco for that whole revolution week, like I had so many people come up to me and it was very humbling and overwhelming that they were telling me they love how I represent the Bay. And and I get that, you know, when we're in other places as well. But it's just, it's one of those things where I sit back and when I'm alone, I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm actually here. So I'm not taking it for granted, making the most of it. So it's, like I said, and this whole journey's been wild since I've been with AEW. And I, and I haven't even hit three years yet. So getting close, but it's, everything is wild <laughs> if I sit back and actually think <laughs> about it. So let's talk about like you know the Bay Area and all of that because you know you you let's start let's start off with like the face of the revolution. I mean that was freaking nuts. You're in there with all of these guys that are just yeah. doing all of the craziest things that you don't even know that humans can even do. Right. And you know you have this big moment, you win, and then even afterwards there's a really funny little uh, like meme of you where you're like holding on to the brass ring and you're just like there, and it's so funny. Um, tell us about what that experience was like to be able to work with all of these guys in this type of caliber of a match and you know to be the one standing above it all at the end i think that that match was it was like a pot of gumbo you know you got all different type of flavors and all those guys are great athletes and they all brought something different to the table that night so it's just you know there's a point where i'm on the i think i got dove on or something and I'm sitting or laying down trying to collect myself and 
and I see someone, I think it might have been AR Fox doing some type of flip. And I'm like, how is, how is that possible? Because I haven't seen anyone do stuff like that since, like, NBA Jam when the guy's going up to dunk and he twirls around and his shoes are on fire. So it's it's just wild. Everyone brought brought it that night. And obviously I was the last man standing. So, you know, I brought, I brought a little bit extra, you know, especially being from the Bay. So. Man, and that reaction too, like, I, you know, you're standing there and like the reaction of the crowd, like everybody was just like, yes, like we knew, like this is the guy. Yeah, it, it, man, it's just, I've never felt energy like that, you know, especially I've, I've wrestled in at Arthur Ashe Stadium, it was 20,000 plus people and it was that night at the Cow Palace felt very, very close to that. Wow. Wow. Okay. So uh, let's talk about, you know, the actual, you know, the win of the TNT championship, because that was an interesting night because not only (laughs) did you, not only did you, you know, become champ and everybody was like, Oh, you know, like I, I pretty much, I think a lot of people were like, okay, I think it's definitely, it's definitely going to be Hobbs. This is, you know, this is his moment. This is his time. And it did happen. However, you had the, you had the help and also the alignment of a new person that a QT, and you guys have this new uh you know you guys are coming together so there was a lot of you know there was a big conversation surrounding that I want to ask you you know what that moment felt like and if you were on social media seeing what people were saying and all of that so let's 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 take a few steps back you were at revolution you were at the the media scrum yep you you saw what I told Warlow you did yeah you were there You, you have video footage of it and so I, I, I meant that. I took that to heart. Like, I, I don't think anybody knew I was coming in. I was just hanging around the building, being nosy, and, oh, he's getting interviewed. So I had to let Warlow know how I felt. And as far as this new alignment everybody's talking about with QT, QT and I have always been tight. Like, everybody loves when pro wrestlers shoot. So we're going we're gonna to shoot for a minute. QT was the one that texted me in the summer of 2020 to see if I was a local talent and I could come out to Jacksonville and I'm all the way in California. And so I had just got laid off. My daughter was a few months from being born. And so I just rolled the dice, threw it out all on the line. And QT has been there every step of the way. He has had some type of guidance input on every single match that I've had. And I'm 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 a hundred percent sure he doesn't need me to tell all our business, but I'm gonna put some of it out there. He is he's been helping me since day one. That that's that's not a, a gimmick or a joke. Like QT does so much behind the scenes back stuff. There's so many people that come up to me, come up to him every single week. So and he and he's told me from day one his word is his bond and you know, unfortunately, Warlow was the casualty and he had to find out. So so what does it mean to you? Because you mentioned, you know, all of this, you know, history with you and QT and how he, you know, he's, you know, helped you out and helped you get your start in AEW and yeah. all of the advice and also mentioned all of the hats that he wears and whatnot. So what does it mean to you to be like, OK, this is somebody who clearly could have kind of gone any direction, could have maybe done anything with anybody else. But there's this alignment with you and him now on screen and the fact that you guys are getting to like test the waters to see what that on-screen, you know, chemistry is going to be like for you. What does it mean to kind of get that opportunity to work with someone like QT and, uh, you know, and help you advance and continue growing? It's, it's, QT is my advisor. You know, I, I, he has so much knowledge um, in professional wrestling. So it's, I like I said, I, I go to him for advice. He's, he's my advisor when he's at ringside with me. So if he tells me I need to pick it up, I need to pick it up. I mean, you saw what I did to Ray Phoenix. I mean, yeah, that, that was fun. Did the same thing to Christopher Daniels, you know, at our at our first house show. And same thing is going to happen to Penta. So he he he's he helps out the monster a lot. So I love it. I love it. I'm so interested to see how you guys continue to play off of each other. And obviously with the QTV, uh, that's an entirely, you know, it, it, I think the concept is pretty it's cool. Hilarious. It's, it's hilarious. so funny. Yeah. What did you think of it? I love it. I love it. I love it. I mean, it's, you know, of course, the 
you know, when we have our QTV episodes and whoever the victim is, they don't like it, but what are they going to do, fight us? It's great. I love it. I love all of the, uh, you know, influences that it's taking from and like just mixing it all into this, you know, one little wrestling universe, I guess. Yeah, we, we should have our own show. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. So uh, Hobbs, I do want to ask you because, you know, you mentioned kind of going, coming into AEW, you started off as enhancement talent and look at you now, you're TNT champ. So I do want to ask you what was given that, you know, you were kind of, you know, involved in this program with Wardlow and Samoa Joe, uh, you know, in and out and all of that for quite some time. But for the moment, when you actually found out that, hey, you were going to be winning the face of the revolution ladder match, uh, Wardlow was going to, you know, be losing the title to you. For you, what was your reaction to that? And when you be when you find out, hey, I'm going to be champion of, you know, maybe one of the champions in this company. What is the mindset or what is the, what are the thoughts that go through your head? Because you know you're going to be, uh, you know, on a different level, on a different plateau, and people are going to look at you differently, and you're going to have different responsibilities when you're holding gold for me i don't believe anything until it actually happens um you can say you can say something's gonna happen a thousand times but until it actually happens then i'll believe it um i didn't believe i was winning the belt until my arm was raised and the belt was in my hand so that re whole reaction what you saw on tv was 100 percent real as far as being one of the faces of the company now it's something that i've always wanted and i believe whether you have championship gold or not, you need to represent the company to the fullest. Um, and that's that's what I've been doing since day one. The only difference now is that I have championship gold. I have a higher standard. I have to not take my foot off the pedal. So that means training harder, studying harder, asking more questions, taking care of business in the ring, being more aggressive and just taking everything up 100%. And, you know, I'm curious about that because you mentioned, you know, you know, you talk about day one and here's the thing. Like, I remember like when I first started seeing you in AEW and like the conversation around you was like, oh, this guy, he has so much potential. Like, look at him. Like, he just looks so great. And, you know, you're doing all this stuff with Team Taz and and you're one of the guys that you're like, oh, like, I can't wait to see when he breaks out and this and that. And there's always conversation around guys who have potential. Right. But there are certain guys you never actually see it pay off or you, it's just so much time till you actually see it pay off. And with AEW, we've been seeing so many faces come into the company and, you know, you really have to fight for your spot so you being one of those guys that we've been seeing now in aw for you know almost three or three years now um yeah. you know and for you not to only just be that guy that started off with potential but to really transform yourself and finally have this moment what were the challenges for you when you know that you have to fight for your spot you have to earn your spot and you have to prove you know to the powers that be that hey i'm the right guy for this uh for this spot what were those challenges for you being patient, you know, um, ever since I've, I've had children, I've learned that I have to be patient. <laughs> so that, that helps out a lot. And uh, for me, it's just making the most of any moment that you have, whether you have a match on Elevation or you have a match on Dark, you know, whether it's on Dynamite or Rampage, you have to make the most of any moment because you're, you're not guaranteed anything in this business. So, you know, it's just making the best of every moment I've had. I've, I've, I truly feel that every big television match I've had or pay-per-view match I've had, I've stood out, you know, I, I was remembered and that I knocked it out the park. And so it, it eventually paid off. So now, like I said, man, I, I can't take my foot off the gas. I can't slow up because there's always going to be somebody that's in my rear view mirror. And I, I, I can't afford to let anybody catch up to me. Exactly. And I think like, I remember when you had that match with CM Punk at uh, Grand Slam Rampage and, uh, you know, that being like the, you know, his first televised match after the Darby Allen match, the pay-per-view yeah. match, like the first, you know, on, on television match. And I remember thinking like, damn, I'm like, this is such an incredible spot for Hobbs. Like the fact that he's getting this opportunity, it, it was it was crazy. It was such a it was a, yeah. just a win across the board for you. It was. It was a big test. Um, I was Christian Cage's second televised match. I believe uh, Frankie Kazarian was his first. So I was Christian's second. Um, opened up 
Saturday Night Dynamite against Hangman Page. You know, uh, my very first Dynamite match uh, before I got signed was against Darby Allen. And when I got signed, I had a FTW match against Brian Cage opening the show. So I've had plenty of opportunities, you know, where I got to showcase and prove myself time after time. And even Ricky Starks and I, we, we've had tag team championship matches, you know, against the Young Bucks, against um, Jurassic Express, Keith and Swerve. So, you know, like I said, I, every time I've been in a big time spot, I felt I've knocked it out the park. And so... And delivered. And people see that. People notice it. People like know. Um, so I do want to ask you because you mentioned your children. And I know that, you know, the world of a wrestler is so busy. You're always on the road and this and that. I want to ask you what your children's reactions were to you becoming TNT champion. Yeah, it's priceless. It's, um, it's one of those things where just the, the look on their face and the smiles and, you know, the hugs and kisses I got and you know, they got to see me win the the face of the revolution ladder match, you know, so all that is priceless. And, you know, they, they got to hang out in San Francisco with me and my son Bam Bam is just crazy about wrestling. He got in the ring and he had a, a private match with Austin Gunn, you know, and my older son Julian is about six, seven and he, he got a little taste. So it's just those moments right there, I just had to just sit back and just look at the emotion and just watch their eyes get all big, and it is it was priceless. So it's something I, I will never forget. Um, my son Bam Bam, he is uh, he's the owner of the TNT Championship when it's home, so he, he's in charge of it. He takes care of it. So uh, that, that's his belt. I have to have my own little matches with him. So. You know he's got the wrestling bug now, right? Like they're oh, gonna want to like oh, pursue yeah. it for sure. Oh yeah, that, that is true. All three of them. Man, that's incredible. And how do you make sure, like you know, to handle like this, uh, you know, this busy schedule, but also you know, making sure that you know you're doing all the things you want to do with your kids and spending time with them. How do you like find that balance between both of those worlds? I so usually when I when I get home on on Thursdays or whatever day I get home, it's. Is being super dad, pickups from school, after school activities, um, our normal routine, dinner, bedtime, whatever they want to do, whether it's watch a show or listen to a story or read a book. And then as soon as they go to sleep, it's, it's my time. Yeah, like my time to finally get my TV on, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, it's either just texting someone, asking what can I do better, you know, what do you think of this match? And, you know, it's just... It's, it's wrestling time for me, so. Oh, I like I, it. It's like the, the sharpening. Yeah, because like like I said, man, I've I came from from nothing in this business to being a TNT champ, and so I have to. I'm not gonna get complacent where I'm at. There's there's so much more I can do. There's so much more I want to do. There's so much more I am gonna do. So, like I said, I I know there's people <laughs> behind me, and you know I look in my rearview mirror and see them and. And I'm not going to let anybody catch up to me. You stay grinding. And that's the thing you mentioned, kind of like reaching out to people and asking about, you know, what they thought about this and this and that. Who are some of the people that like besides QT that you've reached out to or that you have like good conversation with in regards to like advice, critique, you know, stuff like that? Oh, man, I got a kind of like Billy Gunn is one, uh, Dean Malenko, Arn Anderson, um, Mark Henry. I talked to Big Show, Dustin Rhodes. You know, there's so many people that I go to for advice or they'll come up and just give me advice. And it's wonderful when you have a vet who wants to sit down and watch your match with you. It's of like me. a pinchy moment, right? It's like, instead of me coming up and asking them, they'll be like, hey, for your matchup, let's watch it. So I just got to shut my mouth up and, and absorb whatever knowledge they're giving me. That's really cool because you don't get, you know, not everybody gets these opportunities to be like, hey, like this person gets to watch my match and give like, you know, 
their years of experience and knowledge and critique to you. Like, that's really cool. Um, before we move into our last portion of the interview, I do want to ask you because um, obviously, you know, one of the first things that you were involved in in AEW was Team Taz and, you know, you were doing stuff with Ricky Starks, with Taz, with Brian Cage. And, uh, you know, Starks has really gone off and kind of exploded and, you know, doing his thing, right? And uh, so I do want to ask you because, you know, being part of that group, how did that kind of, you know, uh, help shape you, help shape your start in AEW. And also, you know, what was it like working with somebody like Starks and Cage who were, you know, trying to get their names out? And then Taz, who comes with so many years of experience and, and seems like he just has a very insightful mind. I think the the one thing special about that group is we were all hungry and we weren't given a lot. And so we all had a bond where we all stuck together. And every moment we've had, we, we killed it. Um, yeah, like I said, the best thing about it is we were all hungry and we were all being patient and wondering, okay, what's next for us? What can we do more? How can we make this our whatever segment we're in different or whatever match we have that's different? And and Taz has been in our position where he was he's been hungry before. So getting advice from him definitely helped. But we all we all knew that we were all destined to break out. Like it wasn't this group wasn't meant to be together for years and years and years, you know? So we all knew our own star power and obviously you see it now. So, but it's just being with a group of guys that are hungry like you and you just make every moment and you guys just kill it. Exactly. And that, that was like, that was cool because you're wondering, like, you always wonder like, oh, what's going to happen with this person? What this, what's this person going to do yeah. and this and that. And also like one of the things I mentioned to you when I saw you at the bowling um, alley thing um, was dude, your transformation, man. Holy cow. You have really just, I, I told you this. I'm like, you have really just, you can tell that you've worked so hard and you've really transformed yourself and the look that you have is just incredible. So I do want to ask you about that. You know, what gears in your head were like, okay, I need to make sure that I, you know, do this, do that. Um, talk to us about this transformation that you had of yours. You got to, well, I got signed and got some money. <laughs> so <laughs> I had to I, I'm be real. I got signed. I got a little extra money and I hired a nutritionist and a personal trainer, you know, someone to keep me accountable. Um, I, I have my, my monthly check-ins. So it, it's, you know, I, I got to be real. I, I got some money and I had to change things up. So, it, you know, there was no secret formula. It's just finding the right person that was willing to help me. And, you know, it's being on national TV. You got to look a certain way. You know, you got to present yourself as a as an athlete, as a star. So it's, you know, I had to I had to do something about it. Hey, that's a smart way to spend your money if you want to, if you is, want the money is. to keep on coming, right? It is. You know, you want to show that you're not only improving in the ring, but you want to, you know, show that your your body's improving, that you care about your body. Because, I mean, we put our bodies in the line every week, so you got to make sure you're in top physical shape. All right. So my last question before we get into the lightning round is I do want to ask you, because obviously we talked a lot about you being TNT champion. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk those goals, man. Short term goals, long term goals. Uh, where do you see yourself like by the end of this year, in the next five years? What are we talking? I see myself being by the end of the year, still having some type of gold. Um, goal of mine is being the first African-American world champion. I know that's uh, on some other people's plate, but that's definitely a um, huge portion of my plate um i plan on being the face of the company i plan on bringing a different aspect and culture to aew um but that's something that i'm that i'm working on so i like that i like that and what, like, what exactly? Okay, so I want to I want to make sure that we kind of elaborate on that because what do you? What's your? Because I feel like everyone's gonna take something different from that. What is your definition of that? When you mean like bringing in like a different culture, you know that type of thing. Like, what's your the, definition? Bringing of that? in people who who normally don't watch wrestling. Mm -hmm. You know, just making people wanted to. I, I wanted to be must see TV. That's nice. what I want AEW to be. So anyone that's normally not that doesn't tune into wrestling, you know, I want to create a buzz and, you know, have people wonder who's this powerhouse guy, you know, what, what, what channel is he on? Okay. Well, let, let's see what this is all about. So uh, that's what I mean by that. 
Awesome. I love that. All right. So, okay, we got a couple minutes left. I'm going to go ahead and jump into the lightning round portion. Um, answer these however you please. They're just okay. like super 10 random questions. They're going to be like, what is she What is she talking about here? But we got some fun ones in here. So here we go. Question number one. Uh, do you still remember how your first ever match went? My first ever pro wrestling match? Ever. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, so I was training. We had just learned how to go over the top rope backwards and I was the only one in my class that had some generic boots and generic gear and someone didn't show up to a battle royal and I was told go ahead and get dressed you're in the battle royal and I got chopped punched kicked profusely and next thing I knew I was gonna close lined over the top rope oh man how did you feel about it like did you feel I, good I felt, about your performance great. All, all my classmates in my class were just popping like oh man did you he went over that so great and that, that was my first little little moment i thought i thought i was the thought i was a business by taking a clothesline over the top <laughs> rope of the battle royal you know that's awesome uh, question number two uh who are your top three favorite wrestlers growing up oh man top three let's see man it all depend what type of mood i was in um Sometimes I had an attitude growing up as a kid and I was a little asshole. Sometimes I wanted to be a funny, goofy guy. Um, but my top three, if I got to narrow it, narrow it down right quick, one would have to probably be, <sighs> I love Ravish and Rick Rude, Booker T. And it's a little mixture and tie between, uh, I want to say, Brock Rock and... Austin. I love it. You're like top three. This is a top five. Yeah. <laughs> you got so, a little yeah, bit of everything in it. Yeah. I was in and you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. I can't blame you. Question number three. Um, what match were you the most nervous for? This could be at any point in your career. Mm. Oh man. The most nervous for, I get a little anxious before every match, even if it's, you know, 32nd match. Um, <laughs> oh man. The most nervous for, Probably my very first like live televised match, and that was against Brian Cage. Like opening the show, it was my very like it, I wrestled Darby on a Saturday Night Dynamite, and it was and it was taped. Uh, but my very first one was against Brian Cage for that PW belt, and it's like okay, you're opening the show, and I'm just like okay, the you know? pressure's oh. on. Yeah, yeah, you know, you don't want to you want to make sure people don't click away from the channel. So, you know, so I, I was really nervous for that. That's a good one. And it makes sense. It makes sense. Uh, question number four, what artists or songs are on your uh, gym playlist? Oh, man, it's a little mixture. It goes between Luther Vandross, Michael McDonald, little Ice Cube, Tupac, Biggie. Um, yeah, it's a mixture. It depends what type of mood I'm in. So I just, love it. A little bit of everything. Yeah. I, I can, you know, throw up some 125 dumbbells to a little Luther. So, you know, a little spoke <laughs> up. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, question number five. If you could have free meals for uh, for life at one fast food chain, which one would you choose? It wouldn't be a fast food chain. It would be Fruity Pebbles all day. Oh, nice. Nice. Cereal okay. All day. I love those. Uh, question number six. Uh, what is the biggest risk you have ever taken? <laughs> um, the biggest risk I've ever taken. Oh, man. Probably uh, when I was younger, just hanging around my older brother. And I, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. His, his story has been put out. It's just probably just hanging around the wrong people now you know now, as an adult now that i think about it and question number seven um what would your younger self think of you of who you are today oh man i don't think this dude is cool this dude is man came from a two square mile city has his own day has his own action figure you know so i, I would actually be looking up to myself you're like i'm ready to be that guy when i yeah, grow up yeah i mean you know, i'm not everybody's role model, but I'm someone's role model. Exactly. A uh, question number eight. This one's super random. If you were a ghost, who would you haunt? My sister. <laughs> Why your sister? She used to terrorize me as a child. 
Like I would like, I remember just walking in the room and she would jump out the closet and scare me and just get me in so much trouble. There's an instance where she lit a, uh, a bottle rocket in our living room and she threw it on the carpet and stepped on it. It was a big hole in the carpet and blamed me for it. So no. I, would, I would terrorize the living shit out of her. Like every moment I got. Feels justified. Feels yeah. justified. Yes, yes. <laughs> Question number nine. If money were no object, what outrageous luxury item would you add to your house? Oh, man. I would probably add a, a secret... Hmm. I'd probably have something like the bat cave under my house. Like a secret doorway where like you yeah, press it just, and it like spins yeah, around and you go in like and you're in your man little, cave. Mom will hide out, mom will layer that nobody could track, and it'd be like earthquake and flood proof and all <laughs> mother nature proof. And I could just track people and just, you know, maybe of like a undercover part-time superhero or something oh that's good okay i'm seeing like sensing like a double life type yeah, of yeah yeah all righty and last question question number 10 uh what is something that never fails to make you laugh probably when my kids get into arguments <laughs> do you As try they, not to choose sides <laughs> yeah i try not to and a lot of times i just do this because you know there's you know my, my five-year-old would try to get into it with my 17 year old and this and it's just funny. And my, my two-year-old will get into it with a five-year-old and they have their own conversations and they and they can't really pronounce things right. So, you know, it's just, I'm not, not going to put them on blast, but my, they'll probably see it one day. And I remember my five-year-old Bam Bam was using the restroom and he was struggling a little bit. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm constipated. You know, it's just... <laughs> It's just, you know, things like little things like that with them make me laugh. And, you know, so it's, it's hanging around them. They just there's always something they do that makes me laugh. That's so cute, man. That's awesome. That's really awesome. All righty, Hobbs. Well, I want to thank you so much for doing this interview with me and taking no, time of out of your thank busy you. schedule to come chat with me. Uh, before we go, just let the people know where they can find you, where they can support you and all of that good stuff. I am on Twitter uh, at True Willie Hobbs. Uh, same thing for Instagram. You can see me weekly on AEW, Dynamite on TBS, AEW Rampage on TNT. Follow me. I'm everywhere. Google Powerhouse Hobbs. I am the first thing that pops up. So, yeah, that, that's me. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'm going to post all of the links to that in the description box below. But I'm I Denise Salcedo. This is the TNT champ, Powerhouse Hobbs. And we'll catch you on the next vid. Thanks, yeah. everyone.